Welcome everyone to Global Government News. Today is August 12th, 2010. I'm Darko. Uh, in this news bulletin, we'll be just be covering a bunch of different articles uh, for covering different issues. But this first part is going to be Big Brother, and it's titled India Threatens Blackberry Ban. It says India has followed Saudi Arabia's lead in threatening to cut off Blackberry users unless RIM provides the country with a mechanism to allow lawful interceptions. You like that, guys? The reason this whole BlackBerry thing is uh, become an issue in some of these countries is because they're not able to censor them. Not really censor, but they're not able to go in there and snoop. Having met with the country's network operators, the Indian government has now imposed a deadline of August 31st. By the end of this month, either Indian security forces will have the ability to intercept BlackBerry messages or those messages just won't go through. And the crazy part about this is that I now I actually realize what this whole thing is about. It's about these Blackberries and the networks that they're using. They're too free. They're too private, right? But it actually goes to another step, right? Um, what about the U.S. and the U.K.? You know these Blackberry messages and that are being intercepted. I mean, let's not be naive here. I've read enough articles and covered enough articles to prove that all of these smartphones, regular cell phones, email messages, it is all being put in a database. It's going somewhere in a government database. I'm not saying the government's listening to every single citizen. They don't have the time, and they really don't have the reason to do that. Uh, it's people who speak out against the corruption of the government. Uh, when you do that, well, then they'll have stuff on you, and that's how they work. So I'm just surprised that the... U.S. hasn't come out and officially said, hey, we want to, you know, intercept messages, because they already do it, and they don't have to tell anybody. They just do it. But then again, we do have the Patriot Act, so. The next article is from the Register as well. It's titled, Northern Ireland Gets Upgraded Spy Cams, 12.9 million for better ANPR system. And it says the police service of Northern Ireland is planning to spend some 12.9 million, I'm not I don't think that's, uh, is that pounds? An additional government security funding on automatic number plate recognition. That's right, uh, we have that in the U.S. too, number plate recognition cameras. A spokesman for the service told GC News that due to the security reasons it could not reveal the exact amount being spent on ANPR or any other details. It published the policing plan for 2010 to 2013 in March, briefly detailed its intentions to, quote, provide a new ANPR platform which complements the existing camera systems, thus improving road and public safety and the ability of the state to track the slaves and their property. Because your vehicle, unless you own the actual title, low deal title, you do not own that vehicle. It's a certificate of title. The state owns it. And... Stepping into the war on terror, liberty, and sovereignty, students silenced for singing anthem at Lincoln Memorial. So that group told demonstrations not allowed, and that's how they did it. That's how they were able to legitimize kicking these uh, students or whoever they were. It says in 1939, the daughters of the American Revolution refused to let Marian Anderson perform before an integrated audience at Constitution Hall. The Board of Education of then segregated district also refused to let her perform in the auditorium of White Public High School, so Anderson turned to a symbol of freedom, the Lincoln Memorial. That April, Anderson held an open-air concert and all that good stuff, right? said, uh, two months ago at the same memorial, a group of students were confronted by a security guard for singing the national anthem. The two students, members of the Conservative Young Americans Foundation, were told by U.S. Park Service that they were, quote, in violation of federal law and their impromptu performance cons constituted as a demonstration in the area that must remain completely content neutral. Content neutral. The area they were standing in and singing in is an area that is restricted for this type of activity, said Sergeant David Schlosser. The United States Park Service is absolutely con content neutral when it comes to any sort of demonstration in this area. Content neutral. That's a non-free uh, speech zone. Yeah, you're real free. Real free. But at least 83% of people voted said they're furious about that. Moving on to the rawstory.com. Russia deploys air defense missiles in Abkhazia. <laughs> Abkhazia general I'm sorry I just do a heck job on some of these pronunciations but I'm trying I think effort is uh, like what is it Woody uh, is it Woody Allen showing up is 90% <clears throat> of life so I'm showing up <laughs> 
and I'm trying. But uh, Russia announced Wednesday it had deployed a missile battery in Georgia's pro-Moscow rebel region of Abkhazia, infuriating its arch foes in Tbilisi some two years after they fought a brief war. We have deployed the S-300 system. That that brief war was basically um, the former Russian enclaves that are independent were attacked by the Georgians. So I just want to throw that out there. That's verified with people that actually were on the ground. Um, that's regular civilians. So we have deployed the S-300 system on the territory of Abkhazia. Air Force Commander-in-Chief General Alexander Zelen said in a statement, he said its role will be anti-aircraft defense of the territory of Abkhazia and South Ossetia in cooperation with the air defense systems of the Army. Georgia insists that Abkhazia and the South Ossetia are an integral part of its territory, but Russia in 2008 recognized the two regions as independent after a war with Tbilisi. So... More things just kind of heating up around that region. Uh, this one's from Breibart.com. It's titled, Iraq Needs U.S. Military Support Until 2020. And I think we all remember uh, John McCain saying that we'll be in Iraq for 100 years, and we all thought he was joking. But maybe he wasn't. Hopefully he's joking when he was singing that song, Bomb Bomb Iran. The Iraqi army will require American support for another decade before it is ready to handle the country's security on its own. Iraq's army chief of staff told AFP on Wednesday, and it says the Lieutenant General uh, Baybaker Zabari said Iraq's politicians had to find a way to, quote, fill the void after American troops withdraw from the country at the end of the next year under a bilateral security pact. At this point, the withdrawal of U.S. forces is going to, well, is going well because they are still here. But the problem will start after 2011. The politicians must find other ways to fill the void in 2011. And it says because the army will be fully ready in 2020. And it talks about the withdrawing thousands of soldiers from Iraq and an August 31st uh, declaration of an end to combat operations in the U.S. by U.S. troops. And it says by that point, Washington has committed to having 50,000 troops stationed in Iraq from about 64,000 now. And yeah, they'll still be... Uh, their missions may be ended, but they'll still be doing security checkpoints and all that other good stuff. Next article is from The Hill. In Colombia, GOP Representative Mack calls on Obama to put Venezuela on terror list. Um, yeah, Colombia is basically pro-West. Uh, CIA is big time down there. That's where they bring a lot of their drugs in. So um, Colombia is definitely pro-West, pro-establishment. And uh, Venezuela is more... Uh, their sides towards Iran and Russia and China more. It says uh, Republican Mac in Bogota on Saturday called for the Obama administration to designate Venezuela as a state sponsor of terrorism. Mac was one of the eight lawmakers in Colombia for the swearing in of the country to President Juan Manuel uh, Santos, most likely a puppet. He met with departing uh, President Alvaro Uribe and held a press conference in Bogota to detail his efforts to have Colombia's neighbor placed on the terror list. And if you go to the other side of the pond, uh, you have people in the Middle East saying that basically we're the terrorists. So I guess it depends on your perspective. From the London Telegraph, this is titled, Barack Obama, quote, may be prepared to meet Iranian President Barack Obama's National Security Advisor General James Jones has indicated the president may be prepared to meet uh, Ahmadinejad if the regime resume negotiations over its nuclear program, which they will not do because they don't want them to have a nuclear program, whether it's for... F- energy purposes or for self-defense. It's just not going to happen. So they're just kind of humoring uh, Iran, I guess, while well, Iran is kind of mouthing off a lot lately. From Press TV, world not with the U.S. and Iran attack, an Iranian lawmaker says the arrogant powers are incapable of building a global consensus to strike Iran over its nuclear program. Quote, if the U.S. and Zionist regime were successful in reaching a global agreement, they would not hesitate to carry out an attack on Iran. And he's not just saying this out of thin air. The comments come about two weeks after Chairman of Joint Chief of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, spoke of a U.S. military plan to wage war on Iran. Uh, Please join me in the second part of the video coming up. I'm just finishing up on this article. Uh, Iran on guard without military option. Iran's Joint Armed Forces Chief of Staff says Iran seeks no war but is ready to fight any waged by new supercapitalism. He warned against the threats of a new enslavement system and explained the new supercapitalism is gradually taking its hub off the United States and spreading globally.